Welcome, friends, um, to another wonderful series here at the Ocho, which is Graffiti Park's headquarters. For those of you guys joining us virtually, this is an office where we have um, different kinds of educational programming classes. We perform a lot of our art. Uh, we have a full paint store here. Dan and I's office is here, and we do a lot of other things. So we're at the Ocho. If you guys have a chance, you should definitely come down to see here in person. But for those of us that have joined, thank you for being here. Um, tonight's class is about reading, the importance of it, and some cool tips tips and tricks um, for becoming a better reader, taught by our very own Daniel Milani. Hey. Thank you, Daniel. Super excited to be here this evening. This is a topic I'm really passionate about. If you're my friend or my girlfriend or my business partner, <laughs> you're probably tired of hearing about the books I read and stuff like that. So I'm happy to share why I think it's important and some of the things I've picked up along the way. So it's going to be pretty quick. Uh, and just want to share a little bit about why I think this is a fun topic. So thank you all for being here uh, this evening. So again, we're going to just talk about the why and the benefits behind it, not just like my personal anecdotal why, but there's some research and science behind some of the why there, as well as a lot of successful people, uh, business owners, artists, and things alike, why they think it's important, and then how you can be a better reader. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to talk about necessarily sounding out words and reading itself. It, uh, there's lots of resources to do that and no shame if you need help with that. But fun fact, reading more will help you better at reading. So that's the only way you gotta get reps. Um, so why you should read. First and foremost, uh, we live in a, in a day and age where we have access to the information. Like there were generations before us, still countries today, where you can't go and get any book that you want or buy any book. And so we're privileged to be or live here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I don't know where you're tuning in. Hopefully that you're privileged as well. If not, hit us up, we'll get you a book. Um, but we're privileged to have access to this information. And so I'll talk a little bit about like libraries and other resources that you can use. It doesn't always have to be about buying books, but first and foremost, why you should read is we're in a day and age where you have access to, the, to millions of books. Um, and if you read a book a day for the rest of your life, you wouldn't scratch, make a dent into the amount of books and information you have out there. So to me, to some people that's daunting, but to me, that's like a challenge. Like it's an ocean out there. You get to pick your wave and what you want to write. So the second thing is it enhances your creativity and fosters imagination. It kind of goes into that third point. So screens, screens, and more screens. So our lives today are dominated by our, our cell phones, the screens that we're using right now that you're watching this on or, or even potentially taking notes on. And here's a screen right here I'm going to talk about. This is my Kindle. But in a world where we're constantly taking in, not just looking at the screens, but con constantly taking in the content uh, that are on those screens, whether it's social media, YouTube, whatever it is. And sometimes those are, are beneficial things that are helping us um, get better and, and, and maybe increasing our information or enhancing our creativity. But when it comes to books and reading, it's an opportunity to escape maybe outside influence and dive into a story if it's fiction or dive into uh, nonfiction without the distractions of whatever else might be on your app. So the kind of intrinsic value that you get out of reading is a lot better than just doom scrolling through TikTok or Instagram reels where there might be some stuff, you might learn some things, you might learn some tips or tricks or some cool recipes or whatever, and there's certainly a time and place for that. Uh, but if you're just sitting there, uh, there's a lot of opportunity before you and we'll get into how you can do that. Now on top of those three things, uh, I in research or in, in coming up with the content for this class, I found there's a bunch, if you just Google like why you should read, there's articles after articles about the different benefits, both anecdotal, but also backed by research. And so some of the things that stood out to me um, across multiple different articles and authors and, and different contexts are one, it exercises the mind, increases concentration and memory. So being able to read a story, remember, or remember the different characters, uh, their names, organize them in a plot, Again, maybe that's fiction or no, there's narrative nonfiction as well. So again, we'll get into that. Entertainment improves your vocabulary and literacy. I talked a little bit about that, that you can get better at reading. You start to read faster the more often you read. Again, it could be daunting. Don't necessarily look at it as uh, the amount of pages. Read for five minutes, read for 10 minutes in a day. 
Um, it doesn't have, have to be, oh, I'm going to read this whole chapter or I'm going to read 100 pages this month. It can just be like, hey, I'm going to dedicate five minutes to reading my book. And I guarantee you, and we'll get into it in a second, if it's something that you like reading, um, that five minutes will turn into 10 minutes and you'll make the time. I also would challenge you if you're watching this or you're here or you're thinking about it after the fact, our phones track our screen time. And if you were able to look at your screen time for the week, right, you definitely have time to, to fit in reading a book. And so uh, it's not necessarily about the time you have, it's about what you do with it, right? So improve sleep. Again, going back to the screen, so the blue light, there's a lot of data, and I'm sure you've seen or heard maybe on a podcast, but trying to eliminate or reduce your, your screen time in blue light, especially before bed, the couple hours before bed, give your eyes a break, an ability to kind of relax from the, again, constant screen time. And by reading before bed, not only are you not, and, and if you, and this only works if you don't go on your, on your phone as well, but if you reduce your screen time and you read, a little bit before you get tired, you're not only giving your eyes a break from the screen, they're also kind of getting a workout looking at, um, in the, you know, in this case, words on a, on a piece of paper. So improve sleep, general knowledge. Again, you can learn a bunch of stuff, both fiction and nonfiction. Uh, problem solving, being able to, again, articulate the re like what the whole purpose of the book is, what the plot is, being able to summarize <coughs> different things like that. Reduces stress if you're reading something uh, relaxing, being able to escape, get out of, the, again, the different outside influences, teaches empathy. So you can all, by reading different stories, you can understand and really get to live in a world or in a, or in a different context for different characters. So um, there's a book called like The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde, or Oscar something, it's by Juno Diaz. We'll throw what it's actually called right in there. Fantastic book if you haven't read it. It's super sad, but it's about basically this guy, this kid who's depressed his whole life. But, and if you've never felt that and you're reading that, that's an opportunity for you to empathize and understand without just seeing a video or 30 seconds of someone talking about something that impacted them. You can really commit yourself and dive into a story and, and understand a character and an emotion, something that's completely fictional, but you can understand an emotion and, and, some, and a side of human interaction that you otherwise may not have been exposed to. So that's a huge opportunity with reading as it can teach empathy and other emotions. And my big thing is imagination. I'm no, I'm a, I am I'm wear it on my sleeve. I'm a nerd. I like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, all that, all that stuff. I've read it. I think it's a good opportunity for you to, again, escape, escape the reality and the, the day to day and the, um, the self-help books and the, the Joe Rogan podcast and the Andrew Huberman and all these different things that are like to get better. Um, and don't, don't cancel us if you don't like those things, uh, you know, choose your own, choose your own adventure. Uh, but all those different things, you can kind of jump out of that a little bit into there's, and those are just mainstream fiction. There's a lot of other stories that you can take advantage of. So how you can start reading more today. So these are like the three rules. I literally tell these same rules to elementary school kids when we go in and read to them at, during Nevada reading week. I think it's, I, I've, I can't take full credit, I've kind of blended these from several of, of authors, I'll reference them in just a moment, Ryan Holiday. Um, but basically the, the idea is one, read stuff that you wanna read. You're gonna hear a lot, like you'll walk into Barnes and Nobles or you'll go on to Amazon or something like that or your local books bookstore website, right? And they'll just be like the most popular and that's fine and some of those are awesome books but if you're really into some weird part of history or some awesome culture in in South America like read stuff that you like you don't have to read mainstream whatever's on the on the front page of stuff so read stuff you want to read always have a book with you like again today in the 21st century here in Las Vegas in the United States at us if you're not there and, you, and this doesn't apply to you but always have a book with you like uh, access to the the public library I have a Kindle right here it's like $6.99 a month it's Kindle Unlimited. There's thousands of books on there. Um, Amazon, if you're into that, cheap, easy, quick access. If you're not into that, there's plenty of other, and we'll link them, used bookstore, websites that you can go to. Uh, Audible, if you're into listening to books and books on tape, that's a huge thing. I think the starting rate is like 14, 16 bucks a month. You get one credit. That can ease you into things. You can speed it up, slow it down. 
um, really cool way you can try different things out. YouTube, there's a lot of books for free recorded on YouTube that you can listen to. Um, and there's a bunch of other free summaries, free just websites that have the books out there. Again, give credit to where it's due with the authors um, and support authors and all that in local bookstores. But get a book and have it with you. Like if you're in an airport, you're traveling or not, or you're, again, hanging out, take away the excuse. If you have it in front of you, you can throw your phone down for a second. And then the third bullet point, really, really important. If you're not into the book, just get another book. Like if it's not your vibe, put it down. There's millions of books. Again, you're not gonna be able to read every book. So if you're not into it, just put it down. Um, a lot of people get committed to like, I have to finish this book. I'm halfway through it. I've already put X, Y, Z amount of time into it. But if you're not into the story, if you're not getting anything out of it, there's just so many other books to read. That's totally fine. Dude. I can't tell you how many books I have on my shelf where I have this much left, but it's like, I got what I needed to out of that. And then there's plenty of books where I wish it didn't end. And I'm like, man, I, I wish there were more pages, right? So uh, put it down if you're not into it. Uh, and then these, I, met, I re referenced him earlier. So he's Ryan Holiday, cool author. He has a bunch of books out. Um, he's out there in the media world as well. Um, I got this information from an article or an interview that was written from a, an article written from an interview of his. So that's cited there. Um, but one, read to invest in yourself. So again, whatever, if you're an artist, hanging out here at Graffiti Park, we have books, we pass them around here. We can also link those, like they talk about different letter structure, how to prep and, and set up and sketch for a mural. Like they don't all have to be narrative books like this, right? They can be textbooks, sample books, sketchbooks that teach different letter structures. Um, so read to invest in yourself, what you wanna upskill. The kind of the thing I look at it is readings a part of my job. Like, I, again, I read things that try to make me better. Read to access the wisdom of the past. So history is a wonderful tool and a wonderful teacher. So there's a lot of things that have been written, beautiful, well-written things from hundreds of years ago um, that can still provide perspective, beauty, value in today's world. Three, read to discover you're not alone in your struggles. So I mentioned this a little bit earlier in understanding emotions, but being able to recognize that humans have been around a long time and you're, the pain or whatever that you may be feeling is probably not, is probably not uh, the first time that's happening. There's probably something you can identify and learn from. Read like you're having a conversation with the author. Go, it, you don't have to take it as this serious thing that some mystical person that's like, you know, makes millions of dollars or whatever. You can look at it as an idea of a, of a dialogue. And with that, um, taking notes and engaging with your notes. So today I have a couple of things. So this is like a fiction book that I read. It's called Slaughterhouse Five. It's by uh, Kurt Vonnegut. It's a, it's a classic. I think it was written in the 60s. Uh, it was a banned book at one point in time. And so, um, I have like underlines in here. I use a little highlighter, a little post-it things and stuff like that. More so in non-fiction stuff like this, uh, but, but take notes, engage with your notes. So like I highlighted something that I'm gonna read, um, which teaches you a lesson. Fiction, really funny book. This guy's talking to some aliens. And he says, why me? This is very, so he just got abducted. And the, and the guy who got abducted says, why me? And the alien says, that is a very earthly question to ask, Mr. Pilgrim, why you? Why us for that matter? Why anything? Because this moment simply is. Have you ever seen bugs trapped in amber? Yes. Well, here we are, Mr. Pilgrim, trapped in the amber of this moment. There is no why. So that's from just a really kind of silly story. Um, here you go. Uh, that's from like a really silly story, uh, which you should read. Really good author. He's a bunch of breakfast champions. Uh, is another great book by him, but re taking that note, highlighting it, that's something I could take off my shelf, engage with. And here I have like notes in the margins. I usually use a pencil. Don't be afraid. Obviously, if you got it from the library, don't do this. But if it's your book, don't be afraid to mark it up, engage with it. If you, if you do get books from the library, just get a notebook. Get something simple. Again, we're happy to provide something to get you started. So take notes and engage with your notes. Uh, it's really funny in high school, you may have you may have done this, maybe not. Your English teacher talked about annotating the books you had to read and things like that, and you may have hated it. 
uh, when, certainly when you had certain requirements around how many sentences they had to be and how many you had to do, but when you read for yourself in your reading books you want to read, it really ups the ante. Um, and the last thing here that I'll fi kind of finish with is reread the best books. If there's books that you really like, i.e. this one, I finished this book and then I like read it again. Like, like does it, just because there's millions of books out there doesn't mean you can't read the, the books that you want to read again. There's certain books that I try to read like in certain seasons of my life, certain seasons of the year. Um, and so don't be afraid to reread. Don't look at it as necessarily, I'm going to try to read as many new books as I can this year. Look at it as I'm trying to finish different books. And it can be listening to books, rereading books, looking at your annotations, different things like that. But so bottom line is read things you like. If you don't like it, get another book. Utilize your resources to access books. Take notes on them. Um, there's book clubs you can, online book clubs, forums, Reddit, different things. I'm in a, no shame in a book club with my homies from, from an, uh, my, my previous job that I work with. And so there's like, we get together every couple of weeks and describe and, and vote on different books and, you know, have a good time. So there's lots of different options. If you want someone to chat with, you can always reach out to us. But uh, yeah, what questions do you guys have? Dan, how do you go about finding new books? It's a good question. I, uh, Goodreads is a really good resource. Um, you can make an account for free. You can create different lists on there. So you can make a list of all the books you've read, make a list of books you want to read or you have interest in. Um, and so then it'll kind of curate from there some things you may be interested in. Uh, I would also like, I'm just a big fan of history so i might be like you know good, best books to read about world war ii history right or something like that and then just go down a rabbit hole there's thousands of books written that is specifically on that topic but probably on any topic and so i would just kind of start there just search um you can goodreads you can always look i would also look at different genres on um the like used bookstores websites and Amazon has every genre on there you can bop. Go to Barnes and Noble, but, but the big fun thing I like to do is just walk around Barnes and Noble and like skim different books. I take pictures of like books that I that are interesting to me that I'm not necessarily gonna buy right then. If I'm in an airport, there's usually a bookstore. So instead of just like sitting there scrolling on my phone, I try to walk around the bookstore, skim different books, see, you know. Um, so there's a lot of different ways uh, that you can incorporate and find new books. Ask your friends. A really good uh, interview question to have an answer to is what are you reading right now? If someone asks you that, that's a really good question to have like a couple answers to. Um, and a good question to ask when you're hanging out with new friends or others. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a fun question. What other questions? This is a QR code to our website where you can find our upcoming events. I got a question. Yeah. So what are you reading right now? That's a good, <laughs> uh, so I'm reading this book. It's called To Sell as Humans by Daniel Pink. What I've read To Sell as Human by Daniel Pink. Huge fan. He has, he's, there's like three books that I have of his. I've read, this is the second one. Um, Drive is the other one. When is the one that I've yet to read good author and then as far as fiction goes um i just uh just started reading a james baldwin book um i can't remember the title it's like how i grew up on beale street or something like that so but i try to run like a fiction and a non-fiction at the same time i'm also listening um there's a series called the terminal list by Jack Carr, who's like a retired Navy SEAL. It's like Jason Bourne, but if he was a Navy SEAL, it's insane. Not for the faint of heart, you, disclaimer, not for the faint of heart, but fire if you're into that. There's like six books out. I've listened to all of them, but the sixth one just came out. That was a fiction? Yeah, it's fiction, it's pretty good, but it's written, like the dude was in the CIA, so it's like written oh. like he, he you know, knows what's going down. That's what I'm reading right now. <laughs> What else? What are your favorite books? Uh, That's good. Uh, my, my, one of my favorite, like probably my two favorite like 
fiction, just like all time, are The Alchemist. Mm -hmm. Great book, if you haven't read it. Um, all time for sure. And then uh, the I think it's like Jonathan Livingston Siegel is the name of the book. And it's uh, this Siegel. He's like tired of being a part of the flock. So he wants to go and, and fly a different direction. And it's like a really short story, but it's got a lot of really cool meaning to it. So those are my two like favorite books all time, all time. But like my favorite like nonfiction book is probably uh, either, ha probably How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's just a fun, good nonfiction book. What, what did you say that one was? Nonfiction? Uh, how to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. When um, Breath Becomes Air is a really good one too. A, when uh, Breath Becomes Air. Yeah. By, um, I always forget the Thanks name for of the brain in. surgeon. We're just, but, we're just hanging um, out. This it's a brain surgeon who ends up getting a brain tumor. Oh, and okay. so it's like a really, his like whole perspective of like, autobiography is so good. How to make friends and yeah. sell them or what? How to, how to win friends and influence people? By Dale Carnegie. By Dale Carnegie. Who got you into reading? Dan? I'm looking up a book right now. Um, <laughs> everyone, um, who got me into reading? Uh, oh, air. That's a great. That's a great Such question. A so RIP, my Aunt Marine taught me how to read, <laughs> and uh, so she got me into reading, taught me how to read, and uh, yeah, my mom's a teacher, my sister's a teacher, all my other aunts are teachers. So just everyone's a huge reader. My sister's a big influence. She had a huge like book collection. She's uh, seven years older than me, so I was reading her books, you know, seven years her minor, so I just kind of baptism by fire, and I've been really into it since. Um, the Kindle's awesome, like accumulating a lot of books and traveling and stuff can be can be hard, so uh, there, and you can get them used and not too bad, if, again, if you want to prioritize that. Uh, Empire of the Summer Moon, fantastic nonfiction book about Quanah Parker, who was the last leader of the Comanche Indian tribe. And uh, it's insane. It's an insane book uh, that I would recommend to anyone. That kind of kick-started um, reading, like I got introduced to that, I kind of fell off for, and that's totally fine. Like if you don't read for a couple months or you haven't read in years, like just hop on the horse again. Uh, but that book helped me get back on the horse. But anyhow, any other questions? Yeah. How many times have you read Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Probably like twice all the way through. Only two times? Yeah, twice, but I've read the third one like three or four times because the third one's my favorite. But uh, the the big ones I get, a, I've read Order of the Phoenix like three times. You know? That's a good one. Great. But uh, The Hobbit, slept on, slept on book. Uh, don't be intimidated by that. It was like a child, originally a children's story. Uh, it's, a, it's a good one. Is there any libraries you've been to that absolutely shocked you, changed your world, anything different? Uh, there's a library in LA. It's called like the Secret Library or like LA Secret Library. So it's in downtown LA. It's pretty cool. It's on a bunch of floors. They have like it's like an in an old bank. So there's like a vault and like some different doors made with books and stuff like that. Uh, Pike Street. What's it called? Pike Place Market in Seattle. They have a really cool little swanky bookstore that's hidden that you got to find. Nice. Um, but most places I go to have some some little something like that, like the Black Cat Bookstore. Are you? It's some, there's a big affiliation with cats at bookstores. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I would. There are fun places to bop in. Like um, I went to an antique store and got like a 1932 copy of *Of Mice and Men* by John Steinbeck in like mint condition. The spine's not broken, so it's like that's almost a hundred years old. That book. And it's still, you can, it, I walked into Barnes and Noble two days ago and it's on one of the front tables. So that's, what's really cool about books is like, you know, that TikTok video isn't going to be around in a hundred years. So, um, the stories and things that you can learn, no diss on, on media and content. It's all part of our world right now and what we, what we got to do, but there's a lot of other, uh, stories and influence you can draw from. Do you just bop into bookstores really quick or can you spend a lot of time in them? Dude, I would sp I could spend a whole day in a bookstore, but like, 
girlfriend has something to say about that. But, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, they're fun little, especially if you don't have things to do, like you can just walk around, go to the magazine section. Um, there's usually a clearance section. And they usually have fun little gag stuff too. Bookstores, su support local bookstores. Um, but if there's not, though, Barnes & Noble is always fun too, if there's not that available. <laughs> What do you think about uh what do you think about like book summaries? Like would you recommend listening to like a book summary or someone's book summary before going in on a book? Or, or like an interpretation. Book? Yeah, that, those are great questions. So there are obviously I recommend book summaries by authors if you can find if it's they're summarizing their book if you can find that, which there are especially popular books. And like of mice and men, you can find an, a summary of that. You can probably find a good plot summary of that on Wikipedia, quite frankly, you know, and I'm not like, if there's two ways to look at it, like I think like for a nonfiction style book where you want to get like the points of it and maybe and, and, and some of the things that, that may support what they're talking about, like to, to look at, yeah, summaries by all means, good place to start. And then may, and that may want you to get the book and dot and, you know, sink your teeth into it a little bit more. On the flip side, if it's like fiction or something like that, to what I just said, like you could write, read a summary about some of these, like you, you probably lose the value and diminishes the impact of reading like the prose, like as it's written, right? But if you're all, but also like I'll read books and then go read the plot to on Wikipedia to yeah. under, make sure I understand it. Cause sometimes sure. like Tolkien is a, like Lord of the Rings is like, he'll, he'll take four pages to describe a river pathway. So it's like, <laughs> So, you know, sometimes you get lost in the sauce on that one. Oh my God. Um, same thing with like East of Eden, it's a huge John Stein book, but like there's just, me there's, if you ever try to crack into like classic literature, it can be a, can be a bear. So I'd definitely read summaries on those. Um, but yeah, summaries are tight. I try to read, read them before or after I get books to preview and affirm kind of thing. Alrighty, we've got a question from somebody viewing live. Said, oh, man. Favorite Harry Potter book? Oh, uh, yeah, Prisoner of Azkaban, number three. Prisoner of Azkaban. Man. He said, I've read five books since Easter as somebody who is not an avid reader. From Heck Sean yeah. Hill. That's big up. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, yeah. Shout out to my brother in law, Sean Shea. He out there, he hasn't, he's not a huge reader, and he found a story he likes, and he's read five books since Easter, so. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, it's all about finding and visual and um, not to put him on blast, but it's a cool quote. Like he said, it's like the first time he's been able to like visualize a story and like the characters in the story and things like that. So you may have had to read, you know, certain th Catcher in the Rye in high school and like certain things. And that's, those are awesome too, but read things you want to read. I like manga. I, re I have like oh, nice. the first like 10 Naruto's Attack on Titan, sick manga, um, however, but don't. <laughs> Don't slaughter me. Um, but yeah, man, read what you want to read. How many books do you read in a year? Uh, last year is like my, I read like 27 books last year. This year I'm shooting for 50. Um, but that's, I'm just like, I'm on this, trying to consume books and go down different rabbit holes right now. Like I've just, I just like read a book about the Korean War, massive book about World War II, so I'm just on like a nerd vengeance currently. But I think a book a month is a good a good goal. Like I think you just you microdose it. Like you have five minutes a day, ten minutes a day and um, you start there and then once you get cozy then you can start to like be like, oh I'm gonna finish X amount of books. When is the best time to read? Oh, good question. Um, so, uh, there's an artist called Tom, his name is Tom Sachs. He's a cool creator. Uh, he, his, one of his mantras or rules as an artist or creator is output before input. So in the morning, instead of consuming like content, like reading or, or scrolling or whatever, try to like work out or journal or like draw. So output before input. Um, so I try to journal and then I read a little bit. So I try to, it doesn't, I don't separate it by hours. So in the morning, so I, I would say you can read in the morning, but with that rule in mind, I got to shout that out. 
Um, but whenever it's most convenient, right before bed is not always the best because you'll probably fall asleep. And so you want to set yourself up for success. Maybe it's like right before you eat dinner, if you eat dinner consistently or maybe right afterwards. Um, that could be the start of the end of your screen time since I support that. Uh, but whenever it's convenient, I read today after looking at my laptop for like three hours working on a work project, I took 20 minutes to sit there and read um, and finish a chapter, so. I got another one for you. Uh, yeah. You, you said you like to do both like fiction and nonfiction at the same mm -hmm. time. How do you split that up like in your day? Just kind of like, I like whatever's whatever I'm into at the like I'll be yeah when you're dry, if you're into listening if you can get over the hump of like getting comfortable listening to books because there's definitely like a um I also like when I say like read 50 books I, I should I should clarify like finish 50 books because I'll, I'll count the ones I listen to because I'm not just mindlessly listening to them but like right. so for instance today I'm reading this nonfiction book I've read it for like 30 minutes a day but then I've driven for a total of probably 40 minutes today. And in that time I'm listening to a fiction book. Gotcha. So that's kind of like the, just today. Right. But sometimes I like, don't want to listen to that story. Like sometimes I want to, or vice versa. I don't want to listen to like a nonfiction book or something. Right. So, or I don't want to read nonfiction. I'll be like, I just want to read something else. So that's where the Kindle unlimited site. Cause you just have like an endless supply of fiction, different kinds of stories and whatnot. Um, but I like, yeah, like spy, cool, that could be real, but also, and then also totally off the deep end fantasy stuff. So Star Wars novels are tight. If you ever dove into those, totally they're Disney made them not canon, but they're, you know, they're still tight. Uh, any other questions? 30 minutes. Told you it was gonna be quick. Totally lied. But. What's your uh, selection process like if you're trying to pick between multiple books to read? Like, do you read the back or do you kind of skim through? What's your What's your process for selection? So I'm a horrible person to ask because I'll I just would buy them both. But Scott, I'm a horrible person. My sister makes fun of me all the time. Like I'll just like get books delivered and it's just it's a problem. But um. I read a bad financial piece of advice. It was like, yeah, you know, it was a financial book. And he said like, all, except for books, I'll never tell you to not buy a book. So I was like, oh, bet. Um, that's, it was called, I will, te I will teach you to be, re re I will teach you to be rich. Another good book. If you want some financial advice. Um, modern, where he's not going to tell you to not buy your coffee if you want to drink coffee. It's a more modern take on it. Um, so yeah, not a good person to ask because I'll just like usually pick both, but um, my thing is, is like, I have a bunch of books at my house that I've, I've acquired that are on my list. So I'm usually like, I take pictures of books, like when I'm out and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to add that to the list. And then once I, once I am like going through the queue and I'm not cozy with it anymore, then I get another book, but price could be a factor. Like there's time, there's going to be time to read one of those two options. So. Support your local bookstore. That is the end for the live questions. Thanks to all our viewers. We're going to read some books here. Good questions, guys. Thank you. Nice. Way to go, Dan. There's, a, there's an app I use. It's called, I think it's just called Book Clubs.